Because you and the late Anne Jernberg created and popularized it, briefly describe the rationale or principles of TheraPlay. The basic th premise of TheraPlay is that in order to repair uh, troubled attachment relationships or create new ones, we need to provide the same kind of um, interaction that creates secure attachment in the young child. These repeated patterns of interaction that happen between a child and the parent in the first two years lead to um, patterns of expectation, um, ideas about how the child feels about himself. Children who come for treatment have missed out on um, early experiences that would lead to their uh, being able to self-regulate. So in, in TheraPlay itself, we do pay a lot of attention to helping children um, really be calm or to be more uh, lively and engaging if that's what they need. If a child has missed out on those good early experiences, um, we need to provide them in very much the same way that um, the parent would have provided it when they were a child, uh, for um, infants. So we need to uh, find ways to adapt the playful uh, early activities to meet the needs of older children. When a parent has a troubled child, either by adoption or because the child for many reasons is troubled, it can be very difficult to attune and provide the um, really sensitive response that the baby or the older child needs and that's one of the things we help the parents, guide parents to do. The goal of TheraPlay is to get the child ready for that. We're not saying TheraPlay is the only thing, we're saying many children need to be able to develop a really secure relationship before they can go on to doing the kind of work that's sometimes difficult, sometimes painful, um, and to process bad experiences. So. Finally, we want the parents to be part of this and we want parents to be able to um, be confident to take these, um, this new approach home and carry on um, because after all, they're with children all the time and they have the most power to make a change for their child. Describe how John Bowlby, Donald Winnicott, Carl Rogers, the Anna Freud Center and others influenced you. The first summer after I um, was in college, I worked as a um, an assistant teacher in a wartime day nursery. You can see how long ago that was. Um, and um, I found that I really loved it. I can remember the very moment when um, the children were all napping and I was painting an orange crate to, for, to put toys in. And um, I suddenly said to, to myself, they're paying me to do what I love doing. And so out of that experience, I began to have more and more focus on working with children. And when I got, uh, went to graduate school at the University of Chicago um, at the age of 20, um, I taught in the uh, nursery school there. And um, Ann Jernberg was, came along as my assistant teacher. So that was the beginning of a, of a long time collaboration with uh, who, Ann Jernberg, who was really the creative genius uh, for TheraPlay. The other big experience at that point was that Carl Rogers was teaching at the University of Chicago and all of the graduate students flocked to his classes. He would have a, a, a class of 120 uh, students lead a fabulous discussion and uh, we all just um, totally embraced the, the new um, non-directive um, therapy. Um, so that and his ideas of um, unconditional positive regard of being able to kind of clear out the uh, um, obstacles um, in a person's life um, and op free up the self-actualizing principle those were very exciting new ideas to me and at the same time at the nursery school um, I, we were having regular staff meetings from a um, led by a woman who had studied with Anna Freud. So I was getting a kind of Anna Freudian um, approach to understanding parent-child relationships, developmental issues, and there was a very strong influence um, 
from Anna, Anna Freud and, and that work on the importance of the parent-child relationship. Fortunately, in 1969, um, I spent a year in England and, and I uh, uh, enrolled in, at the Tavistock Clinic, and that was the year that um, Bowlby's first book about attachment came out. Winnicott was lecturing, um, and I attended case conferences in his home, which was a rare and wonderful privilege. Um, so Bowlby's ideas about attachment, Winnicott's strong emphasis on the importance of what happens between parents and their um, children, as opposed to uh, Melanie Klein's theories about um, what really matters is the child's fantasies, um, Winnicott and Bowlby were both looking at what really matters uh, being the interaction between the child and the parent. What led you to play therapy and specifically to TheraPlay? So when I came back from that year uh, in um, England, uh, Anne Jernberg had already started the program, the beginnings of TheraPlay. She had organized the psychological services for Head Start and I had been part of the team. Um, and um, when we found that um, a number of children needed help, we couldn't, we were supposed to uh, refer them to other agencies and there were no uh, enough places to do 300 children from all over the city of Chicago. We couldn't get, no one would pay for it. Um, um, parents couldn't get them to the clinics and mostly the clinics didn't have any space for them. So Ann Jernberg had developed um, a, a program where we would go in, uh, provide treatment for the children. And she started that in the, during the year that I was in England. And when I got back, um, then um, I was very actively involved with both the uh, providing the, the therapy and working, uh, supervising other people doing it. Um, she took as a model of um, just a very playful, interactive kind of model based on the work of Austin Delorier, who had been um, working with adolescents in, in a playful, hands-on way, and Viola Brody. She contributed a kind of nurturing, um, a gentle, um, a playful aspect to what uh, Anne's model. And then I came back from um, uh, England and um, brought ideas about attachment. Together we began to say, okay, this is what we are doing. We are changing these children's internal working models by providing them with a new different experience. The amazing thing was that just going in and playing with these children made a difference. Why are touch and eye contact so important to TheraPlay? What challenges do we face when we make use of touch and theraplay treatment in the current climate of restricted touch? You can't think about parents and babies without thinking touch and eye contact. Babies look intently into their parents' eyes. Parents look at their babies. And out of many wonderful experiences together, the baby sees herself reflected in the parents' loving eyes as a good, uh, appealing person who um, has quality and is fun to be with. Um, touch is absolutely essential to that early experience. It provides the soothing um, experience. It helps the child uh, def understand his own body, um, gives him a sense of safety and security. There's a lot of research by people like Tiffany Field um, about the importance of touch. Um, um, makes a huge difference for premature babies to be touched. They thrive much better um, than if they are not touched. The solution to bad touch is not no, no touch, but good touch. With what age group is TheraPlay most effective? Typically, our children range from about um, 18 months to 14 or 15. Uh, we can work with parents with very young children uh, when the relationship is already somehow not looking good. In fact, we can work with, with parents of infants um, because of we're, we're working on a model of what happens between very young children and their parents. Um, the, uh, with an adolescent um, 
a troubled adolescent, many times they have much younger needs. And um, so it's surprising to parents and to everybody how much they welcome some of these foolish, foolish baby uh, activities. Regarding the importance of parents, do you incorporate filial therapy with TheraPlay? I don't use filial therapy, but I admire it very much as a, as a very good way of helping parents um, be involved with the work. To the extent that I understand filial therapy, I, I think it's uh, working um, more on um, the aspect of the parenting where the parent can reflect on what is going on with the child. We try to work on helping the parents understand in using different approaches, but um, uh, the, the, the playfulness is, is a little different from filial therapy. But. How has TheraPlay changed over the years since it was first developed and in the second and third editions of TheraPlay? In the beginning, um, we were um, doing a lot of just free play, rough and tumble play, um, without a whole lot of uh, refinement to it. Um, we were also doing some very gentle nurturing things, but um, I, the research has given us more of a, of a um, sense of what it is we specifically need to do. I think it's made me more aware of, of the issue of regulation. Probably the research has clarified um, the nature of our interaction, and that's based on uh, uh, what you know the original Ainsworth research about the kind of parenting that leads to secure attachment, um, and then the, all the good neurological work has uh, really emphasized uh, the importance of regulation. When I wrote the um, third edition of TheraPlay, which came out in 2010. Um, I included a much expanded chapter that, uh, that um, takes each one of the uh, aspects of TheraPlay and um, talks about the uh, research that supports it or refines it. Describe current efforts to establish TheraPlay as an evidence-based modality. We are eagerly trying to do research. We have um, never had enough money research has to be done with grants or through universities and we've not had that kind of connection. We have had um, enough we've, uh, studies published that we are now listed in um, the California list of, uh, I've forgotten about the third level up toward evidence-based. Um, we are eager to um, do more research and are constantly planning it. What metaphor would you use to define the field of play therapy over the past three decades? APT has been like uh, an attachment figure um, that has allowed us um, uh, to, it has provided a kind of holding environment, to use the Winnicott phrase, within which we can um, grow and flourish. Um, and I think that that's um, um, as an attachment figure um, and um, still using the uh, um, Winnicott metaphor, with the space between us, we can develop these multiple approaches to um, treating children. What should be the major short and long-term focuses of the play therapy community? The major focus um, should be the research. I know that, the, that uh, APT is working on this with this wonderful um, uh, attachment uh, module d uh, during the conference um, to incorporate a attachment theory into the work um, and um, to think more about how parents can be partners in, in play therapy um, because they have such a powerful influence on their children.